Hey, thank you so much for watching, listening, whatever. I want to encourage you to subscribe because we have really, really great content. And I get to introduce to you a super fun new friend. Her name is Hannah Keeley. Thank you, Hannah. Thank oh you, thank you, thank you. Goodness, I'm so excited to be here. I know. I'm stoked that you're here. Woo. We've been trying to do this dance for yeah. well over a year. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And now the day has come. Woo yes, I, I heard the chorus <laughs> sing this morning. So this is going to be so good. I agree. I agree. So Hannah, not everybody is familiar with you. Can, can you give us a little bit of background? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. So I'm America's number one mom coach. I've been coaching moms for over two decades. Oof. And yeah, whew, that's right. That's a good, that's a good reaction. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's what it feels like sometimes. Uh -huh. um, but it started with my own transformation. I was, um, as a new mom, I have seven kids, three grandkids, but as a new mom with just a few kids in the home, um, some people are saying a few kids, like <laughs> I can't even manage one. Like I was there, you know, mm -hmm. I was there. One was crazy. Two was a little more crazy. Three, I was like, um, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. I'm losing my mind. So here, here I was totally out of shape, um, so deep in debt. I was like, I'm going to be like 140 before we even like get to pay this off. It was just like, um, just so broke. We couldn't pay attention, <laughs> but just my life was not where I wanted it to be. And, um, from that point I really, um, and I'll, I'll tell you how this happened, but, um, just through this moment I had with God, total breakdown. Um, he told me what to do. I did it. And that led to me creating this entire coaching industry for moms. Mm -hmm. So I've been studying the mom brain. I know how she operates. I know what stresses her out. And I know also what can change that. So that's what I'm about today. Hmm. That's totally cool. And your kids, you have seven kids. Mm -hmm. What's the age range? For my them? oldest is 28. My youngest is 15. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So you've endured lots of teen years, lots of toddler years. But see, I love I love the teen years. Mm. Like, I, like it wasn't like enduring. It was, um, for me, every single age was fun. I was overwhelmed when I started as a mom. Once I got the hang of it and once I realized what was really going on, it wasn't that I, um, it wasn't that I was unfit to be a mom. It wasn't that I had like some kind of, you know, I thought, well, I must have ADD or I must have, you know, focusing problems or I must just be lazy or I must have no willpower. None of that. I found out what it was able to work with the way that my brain is wired as a mom. And then I just stepped into this place of joy and abundance that has continued to this day. And now we're helping moms get this same, this same result in their life. But the endurance was never, it was always enduring that laboring to enter into that secret place with God where I'm operating by faith. But the kids have always been such a source of joy and fun. Yeah. It's like a party. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me what your, what was your mom like? Is she like, well, she, she is, she was always there, but she was always overwhelmed and I was falling into the same pattern. Mm. And it's funny because my mom just, I was the youngest of five. So by then it was like, it was just too much, I think, you know, and she really worked hard. She tried to build, she tried to build a business. She tried to manage a home. She tried to do everything. It was kind of all thrown into her lap. And, um, because it was kind of overwhelming, my oldest sister, Regina, actually became more like a mom to me. Mm -hmm. And we have a 10 year age difference, but it's funny because I think a lot of the reason why I have such imagination and creativity is because I was in a way raised by my oldest sister yeah. who was a child as well. Sure. So it's, um, you know, that's a whole other story, but, yeah. but it was, um, it was very interesting, our family dynamics, but we have to, to this day, we are so tight. We have such a tight family. Mm -hmm. yeah. So did you grow up in Virginia too? Like out near? Um, we grew up in the, I grew up in the Southeast. Okay. So we went, you know, I was born in Dallas but as just a little child, we moved to the Southeast. So grew up around South Carolina, Georgia. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And so you have five, four siblings that are older mm -hmm. than you. Mm -hmm. Do you do public school? Do you do activities in high you know, school? It's funny because my dad said if now homeschooling was not a thing, but I was born in the sixties, sure. like homeschooling was not a thing. But my dad said, if he could have, if that was an option, he thinks he would have homeschooled because I had such a hard time in school. Hmm. Notes sent home every day. I had, um, I was placed in special ed because I couldn't pay attention. Hmm. Um, funny, but yeah, so school is kind of a blur, <laughs> but yeah. when I got older, 
in high school loved it because I was actually taking advanced courses because I was I was challenged. Yeah. So yeah. that's pretty cool. So what, what did you like most in high school? Subjects did you like? Um, well, it wasn't so much the subjects yep. as what I could do to get out of actually taking the subjects. Oh, <laughs> serious. <laughs> so I would every every activity there was. I would sign up for it because it meant I could cut class legally <laughs> and then I would make decent grades. So if I could, you know, yeah. just be in my own little world of yeah. imagination and show up for the classes and take the test, that was fine. But yeah, I said, oh, I was a statistician on the baseball team. I don't, I didn't know anything about stats. I'm like, I'll do it. Like, you did the book? I, I did the book. Serious. I did like, I volunteered for everything. <laughs> like, can I cut class? Is that allowed? I'm in. What cleanup duty oh around goodness. the dump? Serious. I'll do it. Yeah. You're on student council. Student council, vice president, student council. Huh. Yeah. And did you do your book? The girl who never showed up to class, vice president. Was doing That's it. funny. In yearbook, <laughs> you did yearbook? Oh, I did yearbook. Yeah. And the student the newspaper, all that stuff? All the things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did funny. you do like clubs and stuff afterwards or not really? Well, my first club was actually when I was eight years old. I am the proud founder of the Bionic Woman Fan Club. So that was actually my first nice. club, you know, leadership role. And then my first business I started when I was nine. No way. So way. So huh. <laughs> I actually started a newsletter that I would print out on my mom's copier that she had there. And I called it, this is, this shows you what a nerd I am. <laughs> I mm. called it the PMA times for positive mental attitude times <laughs> at night. Like what <laughs> kind of a weird kid is this? <laughs> I think that's awesome. <laughs> she was, like I was that kid when you would see like me coming down the drive, you're like, Oh my God, no, no, shut the door. Shut, draw the blinds. Why? Like, don't eat. Because I'm like, hi, would you like to buy my newsletter? I painted a rock. Would you like to buy it? Like I just, Entrepreneurial. Any, very much so. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And your parents didn't squash any of that. I don't even know if they were aware of it. <laughs> oh, no way. <laughs> Hannah's off peddling goods again. <laughs> Seriously. That's hilarious. I know. Pretty funny. That's totally cool. <laughs> huh. So then did you kind of carry that into your like late teens and 20s? Oh, yeah. I've always. I have. But you know what's funny is I think people... Um, the idea of starting a business is so scary because they think they might fail. Mm -hmm. And I always think, I guess I was, you know, the special ed kid that thought, well, I guess everyone fails, right? That's normal. And so I failed at so many things. I finally succeeded. Mm -hmm. Like I failed at seven businesses mm -hmm. and people would be like, if they fail at one, oh no. Right. It's the resilience. You just yeah. build the resilience. I was like, okay, now I found one way it doesn't work. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's funny because I was actually invited to speak at a university because our company was um, one of the Inc. top Inc. 5,000 fastest growing companies in America. And I was invited to speak at a university and I'm like, I've never written a business plan. <laughs> <laughs> never taken business classes. Yeah. What do I talk about? Yep. So, yeah. What did you talk about? I talked about how... When you build a business God's way, mm. it succeeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. New news. Mm. Yeah. Like, mm, this is interesting. <laughs> Never thought about Market that. Market research. What? Uh -huh. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So what do you do to relax? You know what's funny is I have a hard time. Like if like when people will say, relax, I'm like, don't tell me to relax. Right. Because I am in my most relaxed state when I'm creative. Mm -hmm. So um, one thing I love to do is I'll, and this is very relaxing for me, is every single week I draw out a newsletter for my subscribers. Like I actually like get markers and I draw it out and, and write this four page newsletter just about, you know, just to inspire them mm -hmm. with, you know, to live this life of being blessed like crazy every single week. And I love doing it. Like that's probably one of the most relaxing things and, you know, just sitting and on my dock and mm -hmm. looking out at the lake and hanging out with my kids. Mm -hmm. That's fun. So let me ask this question. So you got God kind of empowering you do mommy university, yeah. mom university, all that. So what do you think God's perspective is as it relates to moms? Cause we hear a lot mm. about dads and fathers, yeah. right? Yeah. God, the father, yeah. all that stuff. What yeah. do you think God's perspective is? As it for moms? Well, it's funny because I think he's the same. You know, I think the qualities that we look for in God the Father, 
is also God as that that mother role too, the nourisher, you know, the compassionate, the one who it's it's funny because um Shaddai even means the breasted one, like you're mm -hmm. the nurturer, the mm -hmm. and so when we see God as our source, like think about a baby, their source, one hundred percent their mom. Like, like I, you know, took care of all my seven kids. I was at home with them. I nursed them all. I, you know, when they were, when they were up, I'm there. And so I think about that same spirit of God that is like, no matter what you need, I'm already, I will already have the source, even the desire of your heart. Don't squash that down because I put it there and I'm enough to fulfill it. And so I love that um, aspect of how much of a nurturer and a source he is. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I love that. that's totally super love that. cool. So I want to thank you so much for watching today. And thank you for subscribing. Hit the notification bell right there. Um, that'll help you know when we post new content. And here's a question for you to think about. Um, what do you most like about a mom? I'm not going to ask about your mom because some of you watching, listening, you're like, no, oh, I don't like my mom. But a mom. So somebody who is maternal towards you or that you think is a mom. What is the characteristic you like the most? Like what? Well, that makes you think a little bit. And there's nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with some of that like kind of thinking perspective stuff. And of course, we're going to have this amazing, fantastic joke today, which you will thoroughly love because I planned it like just for your uh, pleasure and enjoyment. And so I had it here. I took a picture of it on my phone and then the picture disappeared. So now I'm finding it. So thank you for being patient and uh, not being cranky. Here's your joke. <laughs> Bruce Lee was fast, but his brother suddenly was faster. Suddenly. Oh, my <laughs> word. Even the camera operators, <laughs> like they're like... <laughs> So next joke will be really, really good. Thanks again.